Round 7 of the Reject Truck Super Series takes place at the infamous Martinsville Speedway. This is a half-mile paperclip-shaped track, basically two hairpins at the end of two's long straightaways. As we have Dimitri Vitkin on the pole, truck number 13, the Ron Den Transport and Logistics Machine. As you got, uh, he gets a pretty good start. The number 14 of Steven Generic gets a good start as well. Steve White, the 25, one of the last time out was on the outside of the front row. Sasha Hawk gets hooked by, or gets, or hooks, uh, Sandra Sessler. It's one of the Rojo trucks in it. Oh, uh, we got Julius Fangere getting, oh, uh, he got hit by a couple of the Farmy Stooges. Now uh, there's Oscar Duck the third coming into pit lane, and oh, whoa, 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 Sandra Se oh, come on, Lance Brown pile into that. But Sandra Sessler and Oscar Duck the third into the pit wall, into the first lap. Um, well, that's Oscar Duck and Sessler out. Oh, Sessler's teammate, Manny Geiner Jr. is in trouble. Oh, into Brown, and that's Jackie Gardner, the points leader in the number four truck. And David Bloom has damage. Why am I not surprised? Um, the 17 truck, Manny Geiner Jr. Didn't look like he slowed down after he got hooked. And there is Todd Cockburn getting hooked by David Bloom in the background. Doesn't explain where David Bloom got all that front end damage, but I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that he just piled into the back of somebody else. Good job, David Bloom. Everyone pitted at the end of this for this caution. Don't know why, except for the 90 truck of Julius Vangere, who has rear end damage. The seven of uh, Rick the Glide Jr.'s pit crew, I think, uh, I don't know what they were doing, but they cost him a lap. Anyways. Uh, the Glide Jr. trying to get back onto the lead lap. He's only one lap down, so he kind of has every right to race the leaders as hard as he is. The Glide Jr. sliding around, though. Oh, into the 13. Oh, Vitkin, why did you cut him off? And that was almost a wreck. Um, kind of surprised it wasn't. The Glide Jr. on the inside of Vitkin. Ah, message sent, I think, as Vitkin hits the wall kind of on his own. Uh, that's solid. There's the 15 truck, that is Richie Foley, he's pitting for a cut tire, not surprised, there's a lot of people beating and banging here, as Foley merges in front of the leaders, Julius Svangere leads in the 90 truck, and Antonio Del Vecchio is second, Del Vecchio and Svangere were 1-2 in that thrilling finish at the beginning of the season in Adelaide. There is the 90 truck, getting by Richie Foley. Uh, fully making, giving everyone a reasonable amount of space. Yuka Pekka, Ken Kanpa on the four. Oh, Ken Kanpa got turned by the five of Fidrick Arneson, but it looked like he had slid the back end around anyway. Three cautions in 18 laps. Well, this could be a long... Oh, Del Vecchio blew up. I've never, uh, well, he's, uh, that's going to be his race done. He's one of the two Rams in the field, the other being David Bloom. So Del Vecchio out of it in uh, the number 22 truck, which is disappointing. He had a... Oh, whoa, what are we doing here? This is... Well, the lap trucks are trying to get lined up, coming to the restart. That's... Oh, Dougal Curt is piled into the 11 of Yak and Marco. That's what the lap... That's what those trucks are doing on the inside. Their lap trucks lining up on the inside line. This was uh, one to go before the restart. Um, but uh, they gave it the green anyway, despite the fact we had the 11 truck sideways in the back straightaway. Um, amazing job there, officials. As we have uh, the 90 of Svendre leading and the 28 of Giovanni Rota in second. Rota will be. Uh, Rota was not actually running uh, at Lime Rock. Oh, oh, the leader's around. Svendre's around. He hit the wall. Cut in front of Rota and around he went. Well, Rota in the 28 was not running at Lime Rock. Darren Older Jr. drove there. Older Jr. Uh, here we got the pace cars. You see in. Oh, come on. Come on, guys. Someone breathalyzed the pace car driver. It's a nice BMW. Don't try. Oh, hey, to be fair, that's uh, some pretty nice uh, adamantium BMWs they've got there. Nice to see that they're demoing those here in the Reject Truck Super Series. Adamantium BMWs, uh, new technology, I guess. We got uh, uh, Yaropal Petrovic leading as you see the scoring on the right side. You see a lot of people out of the race already of the 29 starters. For uh, Petrovic, a bit high into the wall. Foley gets, but uh, Foley is now, I do believe, back on the lead lap as the 14 of uh, Steven Generic goes by into the lead of the race. Here's Doug Kerr reminding us that he exists. There's a bunch of those trucks. Oh, we got people beating and banging in the background. Todd Cockburn in the 35. It gets, um, oh, we got the 42 leaning on him, leaning on him, leaning on him, and turning him around. And I think that might be a bit of vengeance there by the Henry team on the uh, Far Horizon Motorsports entries. Far Horizon Motorsports and Henry Racing Technology is not the best of friends. Is Soap Stever into the back of the 40 of Quinton Boss? Now, Soap Stever did that one on purpose. No one gets turned into straightaway by accident. Uh, it's Quinton Boss and the 40 goes around. Not like that, anyway. That's pretty blatant by Soap Stever. Rhoda leads in the 28 truck. Coming to the restart, that is Yakin Marco second. And 
I can tell it's Marco because his teammate's out. And that's an easy way to determine that, as Clement Grand Mason in the 84, who's going to be running the rest of the races, slides up in front of Rhoda, trying to get himself back in the lead lap. Fully, uh, I guess he didn't get his lap back, or maybe he's more laps down than just one. But there goes the 84 by the leader, Petrovic poking his nose in there, so Steve or Oh, here we go. Petrovic around. Oh, Rhoda's around. So what is Sasha Hawk doing? Um, uh, here is we're on board Yak and Marco. And it looked like the 84 hit the wall and bounced off it, and I don't think Rhoda saw that coming. Uh, gra granted, the line that uh, Grand Mason was running, uh, should have, I, I probably would have thought that would have been a little bit more obvious than that. Soap Stever now leads in the number three truck, that red machine. As we got uh, Svanjare and uh, Geiner Jr. bouncing off each other, it looks like. Fastest lap of the race, you see, is Dimitri Vitkin. Hey, 20.7. Um, surprisingly slow for, um, I thought we'd be going a little bit faster than this around here as Grand Mason unlaps himself. And Ryan Zimmer has moved into second, and Manny Geiner Jr. into third. So, good runs for those guys so far. Ryan Zimmer in that 21, it's a blue and orange truck, you may have seen it in the background. A lot of lap trucks up here. Steven Generic running in uh, ninth right now. Ah, here comes the five of, oh, he's around, oh! Steven Generic in trouble, and Rick Deglai Jr. in it, and Lance Brown. Well, I think uh, that little yellow text says enough. We have 48 cautions and seven laps. Do the math. Soap Stever is still leading. Gynar Jr. is still second. Kankanpa has moved his way up to third, and then uh, fourth we got Wayne Shepard as here we got the parade of lap trucks going by the leader. Uh, Stever's teammate is Rick DeGlide Jr. Brandon Cutmore started the season in that truck, but Soap Stever has really been um, um, pretty impressive ever since his visit uh, with Aliens at, at Kawartha as, the, as Geinhardt Jr. goes by for the lead of the race in that junkyard special. Uh, here's Lance Brown in the 41 truck we're looking at right now. Oh, David Bloom in contact with one of the farmy trucks and he gets turned to the back straight by looks like Todd Cockburn at, uh, hard at work again. Granted, Lance Brown has not been having a good day either. Geinhardt Jr. still leads on the restart. We got the three truck right behind him. That's Soap Stever. Lap truck parade on the inside. Uh, Todd Cockburn's in 10th. Oh, never mind. Um, anyways, Vidkin on the inside in the 13. The pole sitter, he's going to get a point regardless because the Reject Truck Super Series uses the uh, same point system as the World Championship. However, uh, the Reject Truck Super Series adds one point for pole and one point for leading the most laps. As you may have just noticed, Wayne Shepard in the 98 just made a pass for the lead there. Great move by Shepard. Geinhardt Jr. out in no man's land as Kankanpa goes for second. Geinhardt Jr. used a bit of his experience there. Like, he's one of the more experienced guys out there. Kankanpa's not. Uh, Kankanpa moving up a couple of places. Todd Cockburn, um, still running in 10th. I have no idea how he's still there. And, oh. Well, all right then. Just got hooked and turned by. I think that was the 80. That was the 84 truck. That was Grand Mason. Um, I think that's the second encounter he's had with the Henry Fords. Wayne Shepard leads. He's had nothing but bad luck for the most part this season, but uh, he's finished every race so far, I do believe. So pat on the back to Wayne Shepard. That actually is fairly hard to do. As oh oh, we got more problems. Oh, come on guys, brakes. Sasha Hawk piled into that. Uh, a lot of red and white trucks in this series. We're looking at Dougal Kerr as he piles into it looked like uh, Quentin Voss sideways. Good job. There's the Adamantium BMW. Great job there. Here is uh, Wayne Shepard still leading in truck number 98. Uh, we got Kinkanpa and Arneson have traded places. They're going to about to trade places again as Arneson going by, uh, gets uh, caught up in, in, in no man's lane on lane. No man's land, excuse me, on the outside. And Kankampa goes by as Kankampa's teammate. The 84 of Clement Grand Mason goes around along with Rhoda. Petrovich. Well, at least the 90 truck didn't get into it. I don't think that team could use the Jefferson team. They're running out of trucks, probably. Uh, no, never mind. He's out. No, he did get damaged. I take that statement back. Punctured the radiator on the 90 truck. As Kankampa leads, and, um, really? What is wrong with these nutters that they're letting David Bloom run in seventh? How? Look at that thing. It looks like it was glued together and... Never mind. Here comes um, Ernesto Raya on the, ins on the inside of David Bloom. And that's a bit more like it. David Bloom going backwards. It's okay. We all love David Bloom here. Truck number 44. 
Uh, he tries. That's about all we can say. Um, not very hard, but he tries. Um, David Bloom, track number 44. About to lose a spot Giovanni Rota with more damage on uh, that. Uh, looks like that Rota coming by on the inside of Bloom and Geinhard G. Looks like Rota's got a ram too. I must have forgotten about him. Oh, Bloom in the wall. And looks like he uh, causing a bit of mayhem back here. Bloom hits the wall, hits the 17 to Geinhard Jr. Hey! Geinhard Jr. saves it! He's had a couple pretty good saves. Uh, granted, the second uh, one time he did that, he knocked out Jackie Gardner. Uh, got a battle for third going on here, it looks like. Um, no, not in this shot. No, it's up here. In the background. As uh, Ken Kanpa in the 42 still leads. We got less than 10 laps to go, as you saw in the ticker there. Not really a ticker, but scoreboard, you know what I mean. The five truck of Fidra Garnison's hanging back in second. And here's the battle for third that I mentioned earlier. Was heating up just a little bit. And now it's heating up again between Wayne Shepard and Steve White. White and the Ursus team have really had a resurgence. Both their trucks running in the top five. White goes on by, coming by on the inside. Thank you very much. With just a handful, just a couple laps to go. Foley hanging back there in fifth. Shepard now uh, going to try to see if he's got anything left for that 25 machine. Back at the front, however, Yuka Pekka Kinkanpa has driven away from... Uh, the rest of the field, it looks like, or at least he's trying to. He's got two laps to go in this number 42 truck, the Henry Racing Technologies Ford. Uh, trying to uh, uh, get his first Reject Truck Super Series win. Really came on strong ever since um, that run he had at Lime Rock Park. And Fidrick Arderson's getting awful big in his mirrors. Oh, he swings it wide. No, he hits the wall as he comes to take the white flag. Arneson's right there. Fidrick Arneson makes a dive. Our, oh, Ken Kanpa slides the back end. Here comes Fidrick Arneson, one of the older drivers in the series. Oh, here he comes down the back straightaway into turns three and four on the last lap. Arneson in the five is going to go by. And a last corner maneuver is going to mean that Fidrick Arneson wins at Martinsville. Wow, what a race, despite that uh, the first half of that was uh, special. Here's another look at that move. Set him up, coming right off the exit of two, right in the center of one and two. Arneson gets a great run down the back straightaway, right on the inside. Really not a whole lot Yuka Pekka can Kanpa can do here. Uh, this truck is not working well on the high side, really nobody's was. And uh, the 5 truck takes home his first Reject Truck Super Series win. And funny, uh, his teammate won last time out. And remember what happened with Aero Racing Engineering? We had uh, Gardner win a race, then Marco, and then Gardner again. So. I think uh, just, just by that criteria alone, Steve White is the favorite for the next race uh, coming up. As uh, 19 trucks running at the finish, I have no idea what Plus One was doing or what Yak and Marco was doing, but I do believe they were eating ice cream or something like that, or maybe Soap Steve was getting back in touch with his alien buddies. The Autodrome Chartier is the second of the Reject Truck Super Series races in Canada. Clement Grand Mason was on the pole in the number 84 under your Racing Technologies Ford. So both of the uh, Henry trucks have gotten poles. You may notice that this particular track, we don't have too many places to set cameras up. That's because, um, uh, uh, no, let's not talk about that. Um, anyways, here comes the nine truck of Terry Stein on the inside. Uh, as you see, we got pretty three, four wide racing, so we get the lap times are seven seconds quicker than they were at Martinsville, but this track is half as long as Martinsville, a good quarter mile up here in Quebec. And uh, they're three wide over there. Uh, towards the midfield, I saw Darren Older Jr. in the 28 making some pretty bold moves. Stein continues to lead. Here's one of our other camera posts uh, right near the start finish line. Actually, this is in the grandstands, uh, a little over the grandstands, actually. Uh, as you see the nine truck looking on board with Fidrick Arneson and Jackie Gardner. Oh, what are you? Oh, come on, guys. Hero to zero. Fidrick Arneson and Jackie Gardner. Blue turns one and two wide. There's no grip up there and pit in. And they just piled head first into those concrete walls. Great job. Oh, Darren Older Jr., the 28, wants to figure that out. So does Clement Grand Mason. And they just go off the track. Oh, come on. Oh, hey, Sandra Sessler. Oh, who cares? Gordon Martin's running in 12th from the 36 truck. And, yeah, caution's out for Sandra Sessler. Um, up there. But Gordon Martin is running 12th as everyone's able to hit the pit lane. 
or at least some people do. Richie Foley in the 15, Yuka Pekka Kankampa on pit out. Yeah, I think Richie Foley needs a bit of spatial awareness uh, lessons there. Look how much room he had in pit out. Stein leads on the restart in the nine. Steve White, hey, that was a pretty good prediction I made. He's trying to go for uh, go for the lead there in that uh, 25 truck. Ernesto Raya in the, in the 10 truck. Oh, gets hooked by the seven. The Glide Jr. Oh, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. Oh, he got him. Yep, he snagged him. Ernesto Raya, payback maneuver there. Uh, no doubt about that. Click Sasha Hawk in the 86 as well. So, uh, the Glide Jr. and not exactly on uh, too many people's, uh, not exactly too many people's friend. As, uh, uh, who's that red truck up there? But Ryan Zimmer is leading in the 31 truck, so obviously something's going to go wrong with him very soon because it's really all that's happened to him this season. As the scoring monitor is going insane, Dmitry Vitkin is running second in the 13. Vitkin going for the lead in, in the 13, and he's got it for now. Or does he? And, uh, we got another look at Vitkin. Oh, sideways, sideways, sideways. Oh, there goes Wayne Shepard, who just wiped out Julius Svangere in the 90 truck. Oh, Svendry just got cleaned out. Uh, here's where I'm bored with <laughs> Oh, what was he doing? Wayne Shepard had no control over that thing and just cleans out the 90, coming into 1 and 2. Oh, boy. Hey, look, Rick the Glide Jr. going to find the concrete. And Wayne Shepard finds the pit lane. I don't know why Svendry didn't. Anyways, here we have the restart. Uh, we got uh, Steven Generic leading in that, well, distinctive truck. Uh, we got uh, a lot of people out, as you can see, as uh, got that 14 truck trying to stretch a lead there, and we've got he's got three, four wide behind him. I'm pretty sure he's loving seeing all of that because that means he's not going to get into any mess. Speaking of a mess, here's David Bloom out oh, off the track, off the track, off the track into the wall, and goodbye, David Bloom. We'll see you at Hickory um, on the restart. Here we got Steven Generic in the 14 leading. Uh, we got a mess of trucks on the inside lane there. Uh, generic, whoa, he's got a bit of a, me a bit of a, well, looks like we almost had the 41 wiped out there, but the 14 hanging on okay. Here's the 41, la uh, yeah, there he goes, there he goes. These people not learn or something? They can't not just be sitting there, not seeing what everyone else is doing and thinking to myself, hey, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, I don't know, here's Ryan Zimmer in the 31, and he's pushing up the racetrack. Ah, no, it looks like Ryan Zimmer just had no grip there. He pushed up in the center of the corner. Looks like where some other people, like David Bloom, are fairly early. Just like that Farmy truck did. I think that was Gordon Martin. Those trucks all look the same. And they drive similarly, too. Yeah, I was pretty sure that was Gordon Martin. Or, uh, no. That was Cockburn, because Gordon Martin's in 10. And there, yeah. That was Todd Cockburn, 35 truck. Oh, we got the 34 soap. Hey, he saved it. Yeah, so the farming guys actually, some of them do know how to drive occasionally. Um, 15 trucks left in the race. Not even really at halfway. Not even at halfway out of this 120 lap race. Supposed to be 125 as Steve White goes around. Del Vecchio in it. And that's the first caution. That's not for somebody hitting the tire or the uh, concrete barrier over there. Leader is Yakin Marco. Now we're half distance. There's Marco in the 11. Richie Foley second. And... Vitkin into the wall there, but no, I'm looking at third. No, that that's not that's not who I think it is. That white truck. Oh damn it, it is. It's Oscar Duck the third in the Farmy truck, who's going for the lead of the race in that '96 truck for Far Horizon Motorsports. Coming off the corner, we got a caution out for debris. I think probably probably because Dimitri Vitkin head butted the wall. But yes, that is Oscar Duck the third leading laps. In a reject truck super series race. There is Oscar Duck in that 96 truck as we're uh, on our way to take the yellow here. There he is. The, uh, there, no, we haven't taken the yellow yet. No, this is. Yeah, there we go. Yellow's out, not sure for what. I think that's the debris from the Vitkin incident uh, that uh, we're looking at here. But 96 truck. Oscar Duck the third has led laps. Average speed of this race are crawling 39 miles an hour, as you can see. 38 as Oscar Duck leads on the restart. Steve White is second, Del Vecchio's third. Um, 13 trucks left in the incident. Ah, looks like Quentin Voss dropped out of the race. He was the, he hit the tire barrier and that was the, or the concrete barrier and that's what caused that. Oh, Oscar Duck wide. Steve White going by for the lead of the race. Steve White's deciding, yep, gotta prove the commentator right always. I uh, can't let Oscar Duck win. I have to win. 
Uh, Steve White, actually, if he wins this one, could be uh, pretty well placed in the championship, really. But given the number of retirements there are in this race, um, I think really all he has to do is just survive and his championship will be good. Oh, goodbye, Oscar Duck. See you at Hickory, mate. Well, that's Oscar Duck out after a surprisingly good drive from that 96 machine. Hmm. Oscar Duck still scored in 10th. There's still a couple people running behind him. Richie Foley in that 15 machine, the uh, Gotham Ford, has inherited the lead of the race. Uh, uh, there's, I think, only 10 trucks still, or 11 still running. Richie Foley in that f uh, 15, pulling away. Hey, Generic's got the quickest lap of the race. 13, 18. Not bad. It's actually quite fast around here. Richie Foley in this uh, 15 truck. Uh, not really pulling away from the 14 of Steven Generic. He's sort of maintaining a gap. Uh, looks like Manny Geiner Jr. has headbutted the uh, concrete wall and the officials are getting tired of throwing the yellow, so they didn't. Uh, don't look at me for that. Um, anyways, Gordon Martin has just moved up into 10th place, securing Far Horizon Motorsports' his first ever points, and Stephen White, see you at Hickory, but at least you got points, because, well, Petrovich is out of it too, so Steve White and Yarbrough Petrovich almost simultaneously, it looks like, hit the, hit the uh, concrete barriers over there, so both of them secure points. Um, anyways, so, uh, we got the 15 truck of Richie Foley who's just gradually pulling away as the 14 is dropped way back. I do believe that's because, uh, here we go. We'll have to see what happened to our good buddy Steven Generic, and yep, no, yep, same thing happened to everyone else. No grip, pushed off the track, didn't go for the pit lane. Oh, Wayne Shepard going off on the uh, on the other side of the track as he hits the wall there. Yuck and Marco in the 11s, uh, this is going to do his championship bit a lot of good. Ditto Antonio Del Vecchio, though at this rate, um, he's going to need to secure all of the bonus points at Hickory if he's going to want to uh, be in with a shot at the championship. The Glide Jr. off, out, goodbye, good night. On board here with the plus one machine, saying hello to the official. And that's really not much more I can say about that. Richie Foley in the 15 machine comes around to take the win. After a uh, special rip, Gordon Martin got sixth. It's really all you need to know about this race. Gilvecchio second, Stein third. Great run for Stein and Wayne Shepard and Jakob and Marco. It's going to help uh, their uh, their uh, championship aspirations, especially Marco and Delvecchio. And Foley, I might like to add. Every single one of these uh, stooges here, all of these reject truck series drivers, found the tire, found that uh, that concrete wall. I keep calling it a tire wall. Um, at some stage of the race, except for Ernesto Raya, really. And, uh, it's really about all I can say to that. Now, every single driver in the top ten in the championship can win the title at Hickory, the season finale. Uh, Del Vecchio and Foley need to get, uh, both the uh, lap leader bonus point and the pole bonus point. Generic only needs one bonus point, but everyone else could still realistically win the title at the final race at Hickory.